Welcome everybody. Today I'd like to celebrate my 64th birthday and to commemorate this cycle in our life, my life, I'd like to give you an introduction to what astrology is all about. A lot of people think astrology is that the planets they compel and that's a destiny, but I recognize that the planets are impulses. The planets they impel, they advise, they guide, they're not actually some kind of um, force. So um, well, I've drawn up my chart here. And when you look at the chart, you can see that at the moment I was born, this is like a snapshot or a photo of the planets and of all the different angles. So astrology is a study of the angles, of the angels, of the moment you were born. And the reason why this star here is on an angle is that it's pointing to this point here. That's called the ascendant. At the moment I was born, what was on the sunrise? What was on the eastern point and we had a planet called Neptune. Neptune rules things like spirituality, um, mysticism, and it also rules the 12th sign Pisces. So because I have Neptune on the ascendant, we've got first house, second, third, all the way to 12, and each one, each house has a different quality. Now, not only that, so not only was my Neptune on the ascendant, I also had one, two, three, four other planets. So What's interesting at the moment of when, when I was born is that there were four other planets conjunct. So that's called a stellium. So stellium means a star. And I, I had Mercury at 11 degrees, um, Mars at 12 degrees, Jupiter at 13, and the Sun at 19. So really there's like five planets in the 12th house. And the 12th house is like Pisces. So that's why someone like myself was interested in... Um, studying lost Pythagorean ancient knowledge. It's all that because the first house is the self, is the sun. So what's before the sun, the self, is what's in the dark. So people like me are interested in the occult mathematics, the mathematics that's not in mainstream. So my job is to bring all this knowledge of the ancient arcane mystic mathematics into the world, into a curriculum. So that's my job is to make visible the invisible. And the 12th house is all about the collective. So that's why my vision is for a global school. Now, what's happening is that, so we've got all the planets in the inner circle. This is my natal chart. Natal means of birth. But if you look closely, I've surrounded my inner circle with another circle. And these are called the transits. These are where the planets are today. So this is your personal, the natal. And what's around is what planets are influencing my life right now. And you might say, but how can, how can the planets where they are today have a vibrational effect or influence on my birth chart? Because that was 64 years ago. But this is what you have to work out for yourself, that everything is frequency and vibration. And what's happening is that these planets, when I was born, called Mercury, um, we've got Mercury, Mars and the Sun. Today, after 64 years of cycles, those very planets that were there are actually affecting or conjunct exactly those three planets. So these three red dots that you see is Mercury, Mars, Sun, and they're, they're transiting and conjunct exactly um, my natal um, planets as well. So that's a very rare and unique cycle. So that's called a stellium. Um, when I was, um, at the moment though, Mercury appears to be going backwards in the sky. We call that retrograde. So when Mercury is retrograde, communication like we just had Facebook drop out because Mercury is going backwards that's all about communication and the mind so but it's going to go be so it's going to go forward soon so I've written down all the dates so Mercury is going to go direct on the 18th so this is for the 13th of October so five days after my birthday Mercury is going to go forward so what we say is that Mercury right now is in its shadow it appears to be going backward in the sky but it's going to go forward. And in fact, a lot of there's five planets right now around us that are all appearing to be going retrograde. So slowly but slowly over the next months or so, each planet's going to go forward, which means one by one, there's new cycles, new directions going forward. But what I wanted to show you about my ch specific chart is that let's look at another particular aspect. So there's a lot going on. And as I said, this is just an introduction. I just want you to look at um, there's a thing called a square here. See this red line? So that means that Saturn today is at a 90 degree angle 
to Uranus. So that's the symbol for Uranus. So when you draw red lines, they represent challenges. It's like a square in a chart. So you can see over here, I've got 30 degrees, 45, 60 is a triangle. Um, well, that's 120 degrees as a triangle. That's half a triangle. 90 is a square, which is a, is a it's kind of like an opposition. When planets are directly opposite, they're very difficult. So I have a challenging aspect with Saturn and Uranus. So Saturn is called the hole in your aura. So if this is the circle of life, wherever Saturn is, that represents a limitation, a challenge. And Saturn wants to build walls. Saturn, Saturn wants structures and order and security. But what happens is there's another planet that's further than Saturn called Uranus. Uranus comes along and says, no, I want to break this wall. Uranus is the rebel. So people like Uranus, uh, people who were born under Uranus were like Einstein and Jimi Hendrix. They came in with a whole new frequency because Uranus here rules the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius has been the space age. So what's interesting is that this Saturn square, that means it's a 90 degree, it's one, two, three. If you go um, from Saturn here, you go one, two, three. So that's three lots of 30 degrees because every sector here is 30 degrees. This 90 degree angle would actually form a square. But I also had this same aspect, an aspect of Saturn square Uranus in my birth chart. So when you look at Saturn here, I've got Saturn also opposite Uranus. So the very thing that, that's in my birth chart is also in the planets today. And that's why I highlighted those particular angles. So let's have a look at this. So Uranus in my birth chart, Uranus is in my 10th house. So, so this is the first house. So this goes all the way around to the 10th house, which is your career. It's like the 10th sign Capricorn. Capricorn rules governments and how we order the world. But because I've got Uranus in my 10th sign of career, it means that I'm gonna be doing something in my life that's not conventional. So let's say there's a normal mathematics curriculum which is dry and not interesting. I come along and with my mission in life is to create a whole new online curriculum, like a, a new mathematics that's connected to the ancient masters. So that's what this whole thing is here is that I've got, I've got um, Saturn today is in my fourth house, which is opposite the 10th house of careers. And I've also got Chiron there nat natally. So Chiron is the wounded healer. So wherever Chiron is in your chart, you would want to examine what, what's it telling us? What, what, what's driving you towards your career to create, say, a new school of um, sacred geometry? It's because Chiron is the wounded healer. It's in the fourth house of my home and my father. So that, that could be that we need sometimes a drive. Like my father maybe never accept, accepted that I never did medicine. And um, he's also a maths teacher. So I have this drive that I wanna be recognized by my father. So these are the wounds, Chiron being the wounded healer. We need something that takes us to the next level to achieve the greatest thing we can do in our life. So astrology is pinpointing to us the energies that are most harmonious to achieve what we're here to do, our mission. And that's all expressed by um, what I'm calling the Saturn square Uranus. And that's affecting the whole world because remember, this is the collective and the outer planets, the outer transiting planets affect the whole world. So we could be exploring, well, where's Jupiter, uh, where's Pluto? Pluto is the furthest planet from the sun. And right now the moon, this is on the 13th of October, the moon is conjunct in Pluto. Um, and Pluto, for example, rules things to do with um, um, death transformation. And how do they work that out? They, so astrologers over the centuries studied um, important situations in life, like when a president comes to power, or um, say when Nagasaki was dropped, when, when they dropped the bomb on, on Japan, what was in the sky. So there was Pluto, this Pluto here was conjuncting Mars. So that's how astrologers make definitions that Pluto rules death and rebirth, but it's really about transformation. So here we have Pluto in Capricorn. Capricorn rules governments. And we know that Pluto returned. For Pluto to go right around the whole zodiac and come back to where it 
started is a 243 year cycle. So what happened 245 years ago was in 1776, the Americans united the 13 colonies with Benjamin Franklin. And so America was born. So even countries have birth dates. So right now, the whole world is looking at um, Capricorn, in um, Pluto in Capricorn, because this was the time of President Trump. So two years ago was when v Pluto went right around. It goes very slowly. And after 243 years, Pluto came back to where it was that time ago. And that's when Trump was in power. And what was Trump trying to do? He was trying to shake up the establishment. He was bringing in complete transformation. And without getting into politics, just wanted to let you know that this is all about cycles. Um, yeah, so it's about governments and structures. So, um, but we have to interpret all this into our own personal life. Um, in my personal life, because I'm turning 64, we look at nine year cycles. So a nine year cycle means that I, when I'm 63, because nine times seven is 63. So I've had seven lots of nine year cycles, but this year on the 13th of October, I'm going to begin a new um, nine year cycle. So that means whatever's going to, I'm beginning a new process, a new journey. And it, it has a lot to do with setting up the first sacred geometry online course in the world. It's, it involves a whole team of people. It's a, the work I've been doing for 40 years has brought me to this point. So it's good to know that I have a nine year cycle. So that's, um, that's called numer numerology. Um, there's also here, uh, there's another return. So Venus, here's Venus in my birth chart at three, three degrees Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is all about knowledge, it's traveling the world. It's um, it's wanting to um, travel to other countries and learn about ancient knowledge. So that's Sagittarius. I have Venus in Sagittarius natally, which means I've always loved knowledge and studying. But right now, Venus, as it's gone around, is exactly conjunct. The transit in Venus is conjunct my my natal Venus. So um, that that's another full cycle. Um, and that that's also conjuncting um, what there's also north nodes and south nodes. So I have here my my north node and my south node. They're always in opposition. So south node is where you've come from. It can relate to past lives, where where you began your journey, and the north node is where you're going to in life. So there's a lot of symbolism in here. I don't want to go too deep in it. I just wanted to let you know that. Um, we, we 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 look at all the sign changes like when when is um when is jupiter going to enter pisces and what and maybe by next year jupiter here will be conjuncting neptune so if you're interested in astrology we need to um study these cycles because these are the cycles of your own personal life um there's a lot of sacred geometry embedded in this you are the i am that i am you are on the, are the center of the universe so that is why we're celebrating a birthday it's just a cycle it's a ritual to reconnect with your journey who you are and to put steps in place so that you can attain the highest level of your being hope you enjoyed this presentation